headed by ISIS militants as a stark message to President Bashir al-Assad as ISIS wages its United Nations and CIA-backed horror across the Middle East into the jowls of Damascus. The legendary 82-year-old scholar had been interrogated for a month over the location of treasures from Palmyra. His beheaded and mutilated corpse was hung from one of the Roman-era column ruins in the ancient Syrian city. With him dissipates decades of world history and irreplaceable relics that stood for thousands of years. Before the destruction of Palmyra, the ancient Assyrian city of Nimrod, the site believed to have been where the Tower of Babel was built, was destroyed in March. Secretary of State John Kerry said he was disturbed by the destruction in Nimrod. Yet none of this would have happened without Kerry's hidden hand allowing the ISIS monster to grow on his watch. Mark Altawil, professor of archaeology at University College of London said, I would describe Nimrod as one of the really unique archaeological sites in the entire ancient Near East. Nimrod is the capital of the first empire in this long series of empires that have profound significance in the way this region develops and ultimately how it affects our own society. In March of 2015, ISIS ravaged Iraq's antiquities, destroying the ancient royal city of Sargon at Khorzabad, northeast of Mosul. The ancient city of Hatra and the Mosul Museum, where many of the Assyrian artifacts were housed, was destroyed. The multi-million dollar Mosul library that housed thousands of ancient books and manuscripts were looted and used for firewood, and Jonah's tomb was blown up. Jonah's story being one that is spread among all faiths. Meanwhile, the United Nations stands by and wrings its hands, deeming the destruction a war crime refusing to own up to any of the blame while supporting the new world order in its bid for global dominance bursting with the demons of the united states and united nations supported obliteration of human history john bound for infowars.com coming up we're going to look at why americans are fed up with gun control and we're going to look back on the life of filmmaker william lewis Stay tuned. It's all that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News, and I'm your host, Rob Dew. No one will go to the New York Times or care that it's even admitted that the government's hatching most of the terror plots. Or people will say, what are you doing? Endorsing radical Islam, saying it doesn't exist? I didn't say that. I said our criminal government is arming them, aiding and abetting them, protecting them to attack and kill us so they can take our freedoms. That's what I said. Never water yourself down just because someone can't handle you at 100 proof. It's the Alex Jones Show because there's a war on for your mind. CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, Glenn Beck, and everybody else that runs around claiming that I'm saying there aren't any real Muslim terrorists. That's a load of crud and you know it. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. And that's the principle of InfoWars life, as far as I understand, that you've always had, is that it's not about synthetic chemicals and forcing actions. It's about letting your body do its own thing and giving your body the tools it needs to create these different compounds that are super valuable and super beneficial. You will find Brain Force and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888 Two five three three one three nine. I wanted to bring Weldon Henson in here briefly because we have a great sponsor. And boy, I've sure been enjoying the firearms that I've gotten from them. HDFirearms.com. That's Head Down Firearms. They have super high quality 223s, 308, you name it. It's called 556, technically, in the 223, that are guns that would be $3,000 or $1,500. Guns that would be $1,500 or $900. Well, the important thing to remember is that if you're not in the market to buy a brand new rifle. You have an AR-15, you have an AR-10 platform 308 rifle. They've got everything you need to upgrade it. Buy a new part, buy a new trigger, buy a new muzzle brake, buy a new handrail. It's all an upgrade for your rifle because these are all superior top of the line quality products made in America. 
Tell folks uh, about their low profile series. Well, this is an important thing to have. This is untraceable. You, anybody can get this kit right here. You don't have to go through a, a federal firearms license place. Uh, you can have it shipped right to your house. This is what the traders have been trying to shut down. Absolutely. So you basically have everything you need besides a lower receiver because that's what's traceable. That's what's serialized and that's what the, the federal government's after. But uh, you can get this right here. Get your own lower receiver any way you want. There's different programs. All you got to do is your own research and you can find out how to get a lower receiver so that you can put it on this. Maybe you already have a lower receiver from an AR from way back that you just don't quite use anymore. It's old, something like that. You can throw it on this. You basically have a brand new rifle and you saved money by putting it together yourself and buying this kit right here, which is cheaper than the actual rifle. And they've got the highest quality barrels, the highest quality triggers. We're not just saying that. Go look at the third party reviews. Tell them about the new rifle they're producing that's getting amazing reviews. And then I just got one, this 308. Yes, that is very... Arcadius. Arcadius, that's very exciting. They just came out with their own line of um, AR-10 platforms, which is basically an AR-15, but instead of it being a 5.56, it shoots a 308 round, which I know you personally like shooting a 308. Uh, I like them both. I mean, just to be clear, they've always for years been making this for the big manufacturers, the high end. They're just absolutely. now not private labeling. They're putting out their own guns. Yes. Well, the one they sent you, I'm actually jealous of, is a beautiful gun. Um, it's set up and configured for long-range shooting, marksmanship type things. Just the scope alone is something to <laughs> snuggle with. It, yeah, it's a Vortex 4x16 scope, which you can get a head down as well, their distributor. Um, and and I think things for people to remember is that if you want a 308, you don't have to get the 18-inch barrel. You don't have to get the 22-inch barrel. You don't have to get it set up for marksmanship. You can get one with a 16-inch barrel that's set up for more of an assault weapon type, you know, uh, uh, configuration. So anything you want, people just call head down. You can get anything you want made there. And any configuration you might want on your rifle, they're, they're able to do that. And they have 100% perfect customer service ratings there. Bottom line, it's not just firearms, a ton of accessories, very affordable, and it supports the info war. If you're not shopping at hdfirearms.com, you're not helping the info war. I mean, this is a win-win. Thank you all for your support. Check them out today. Thank you, Weldon. Welcome back. Now, coming up, we're going to look back on the life of filmmaker William Lewis and explore some new developments in the war on drugs. But first, let's get to uh, some gun control news. Here's the New York Times' Josh Barrow, and he said, actually he said this on TV, massive gun grab is the only way to impact violent crime. This is what he said on MSNBC. Here's that clip. On it. But I would also note the things that we talk about in the United States are so at the margins on this stuff that I, I wonder about how much they would really impact gun violence. If you did something like Australia did, where you really take away massive amounts of guns that people have, reduce the rate of gun ownership substantially in society, you could have a big impact on, on violent crime. But I mean, changes with, with background checks will, will help at the margin, but I wouldn't expect that to have big impacts on the rate of violent crime in the country. Yeah, there you go. And of course, his feelings and uh, concepts are directly in contrast with most of the American people. In fact, this is from Steve Watson. It came out today on Infowars.com. Poll, 60% of Americans are against more gun control. A survey conducted in the wake of last week's Virginia shooting of two reporters on live TV finds that the majority of Americans do not believe stricter gun control laws would have prevented the incident. Rasmussen finds only 29% of likely voters feel that further gun control laws would have done something to prevent the shooting. While 60% of Americans, more, or more than twice as many, said that they believe more gun control would, wouldn't have done anything to stop the attack. The poll also found 68% agree with Donald Trump's statement, it's not a gun problem, it's a mental problem. And that's something that we've been saying here on InfoWars for a long time. The shooter in, in this incident was able to legally go buy a gun with a background check. The shooter in Charleston was able to go legally buy a gun with a background check. So we're seeing that background checks really aren't the answer. What we really have to look on is maybe how, how much medication are we prescribing these people? How many times do we have people going off the rails after taking too much of their meds or coming off their meds or just getting on their meds? There's all these red flag areas that you really have to be worried about with people using, the, using this stuff. But what does this turn to? All this gun control talk has turned really deadly, especially over the weekend. Uh, and here we have Sheriff Clark coming on Fox News saying Obama has declared open season on cops. And this has to do with a, a sheriff's deputy that was killed in Houston on Friday. And here is Alex Jones analyzing the sheriff's remarks. And here's the headline at Infowars.com that says it all with the video clip of the sheriff on the news nationally. Uh, of course, uh, guest of this broadcast as well, now becoming really a national leader 
uh, because of his articulate, uh, educated, informed, libertarian slash conservative stance. And that, of course, is Sheriff David Clark, who I'd love to see run for president. I mean, this guy's really has it down. I've seen him get up and give hour-long speeches to groups online. I've seen the speeches, and he just really knows what he's talking about. He doesn't have notes, doesn't have a teleprompter. Uh, he's the real deal, and just everything he says makes complete sense. He's really got it. I said last December the war had been declared on the American police officer led by some high-profile people, one of them coming out of the White House, one coming out of the uh, uh, United States Department of Justice. And uh, it's open season right now. There's no doubt about it. Now, this whole movement, Black Lies, I've renamed it L-I-E-S, because it's based on a lie, the hands up, don't shoot. Um, like, that's why I said this slime needs to be eradicated from American society and American culture. I need every law-abiding person in the United States of America to stand up and start pushing back against this slime, this, this filth. This was an assault on the American way of life, the American justice system. And uh, if the American police officer backs off, we're all in trouble. And you have to understand, the White House has been caught, and so has Hillary, and so has Nancy Pelosi, with their staffers inside Black Lives Matter at the national level, pushing this narrative with Al Sharpton, and with MSNBC and CNN. So we know this is going on. I'm gonna break down why this is happening in a moment because this is the key. If you understand the mindset of these people and if you understand why they're doing this and how they're getting away with it, then you understand everything else. You understand the culture of the socialist and the communist. You understand their worldview. You understand most importantly, how to defeat them. Here is the headline out of ABC News 13 in Houston. Suspect arrested and charged with fatally shooting Harris County Deputy Darren Goforth. Friday and then Saturday when we had video of the guy, the news would just say a dark complected man. That's how politically correct this has gotten where major universities now are banning the word man and woman, boy and girl, he or she. I have that in the news today. This is a cult takeover, but it's scientific. These are not whack jobs. These are not, these are not people that, that are just forcing their agenda on us. This is a planned rollout. They are so politically correct that they're going, we don't know the motive, we don't know why. It's completely obvious. Breitbart's got the report. It's up on Infowars.com. Texas deputy executed days after black radical group calls for killing cops. I mean, this is all over the place. These same groups call for people to come after Infowars, folks. And what David Clark has pointed out is that radical Islamists, ISIS groups, ho hoods, thugs, hoodlums, the whole prison culture, the bad prison culture, there's a lot of innocent people in prison, but the really nasty perp culture is fusing with a bunch of misfits, I'm basically paraphrasing him, into this Black Lives Matter movement. <laughs> And you really got to look at what Alex said in that clip, how he talked about how first they go after the language and say, you can't say this, you can't think this, but then groups like Black Lives Matter are allowed to go around and chant, die, pig, die, essentially, and nobody is reprimanded. So then somebody sees that and goes, well, I'm going to go ahead and get me some, I'm going to get me a cop. And then you have what happened in Houston over the weekend. So people really need to look at where this this control of you can only say certain things is political correctness on steroids is going because it, it's not going to lead anywhere good in this country. And what's, where it's going to lead to is a civil war between the cops and minorities. And it's not going to end up good. I can tell you that right now. So don't fall for it. Now let's look at this exclusive that just came out of Breitbart. Hillary Clinton shared an email network with the Clinton Foundation. Hillary Clinton's private email server was housed at the same physical location uh, on the same network as email server used and operated by the Clinton Foundation, Breitbart News has exclusively learned. Records reveal that uh, Hillary Clinton's private ClintonEmail.com server shared an IP address with her husband's Bill Clinton's email server, PresidentClinton.com, and both servers were housed in New York at their house. Uh, the bombshell revelation raises new concerns about the possible illegality of Hillary Clinton's private email use. And now Leanne McAdoo has more on this. used uh, a single 
uh, account for convenience. Obviously, uh, these years later, uh,